Solar by Green Greg here, and today I'm going to talk about the My Solar Edge monitoring app. I'm going to do an easy step by step tour for homeowners. So, the first step is your installer will set up the solar system, and you will get an email like this from Solar Edge Registration. In there, it'll invite you to Solar Edge, and usually there is a link to the app, but just in case there is not, the app that you want is the My Solar Edge app, and this is the symbol. This is important because there are several different Solar Edge apps, but this is the proper one for homeowners. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mirror my iPhone and go through the app with you step by step. Okay, so here's an overview of the My Solar Edge app. So you'll see here in the top left corner, solar production today. The local weather right now is 89 degrees Fahrenheit and it's raining okay this is pretty cool because this is tied into the local weather station so even if you're not home you know what the solar system is doing what the local weather is in this green circle here the solar system right now is producing 1.4 kilowatt hours so not much right now because the sun is setting and it's raining but it's still producing a little bit despite that which is actually pretty good now earlier in the day it was producing a lot more now, you'll notice there's a green arrow going down to the inverter. That means the solar system is producing. It's feeding into the solar edge box. You'll notice here off to the left, we got this solid blue circle that says 4.77 kilowatt hours. This is how much electric is being used in the home right now to power lights, etc. So, because the solar system is not producing 4.77, right? It's producing less. It's taking 3.37 kilowatt hours from the utility company right now. That's why there's an orange arrow right now going to the solar edge inverter. So 3.37 plus 1.4 equals 4.77 kilowatt hours. That's right now. Now, earlier in the day, the solar system was actually producing more electric than being used, and it was a green arrow going back to the utility, okay? When the sun sets, by the way, then this green will disappear. Obviously, the solar system won't be producing anything. Okay. Yeah, okay. If you do not have an energy hub or storage inverter with a consumption meter, then you will not have this blue circle here. Okay. If you do have that type of inverter, you can have your installer add the consumption metering to your inverter. Below here, this customer does have a battery. Again, that's an option. Their battery is charged at 100%. This customer also has an EV charger, a arrow going down to this EV charger, okay? If you're producing more solar kilowatt hours than you're using, and you have an EV charger, you could actually charge your EV directly from the solar system, which is pretty cool. So you can avoid the electric company altogether charge your EV. Pretty awesome. Solar Edge has also come out recently with a module where you'll be able to actually use your EV vehicle as battery backup for your home as well. So really cool that you can do that and get some energy independence. So far, energy produced this month. Now, right now, we're only through the first week of September, 315 kilowatt hours. This year, 10 megawatt hours. And lifetime, 52.8 megawatt hours. So let's scroll down a little bit. And here we have, as you can see, a bar for day, weekly, monthly, or year, and also billing. Let's talk about billing real quick. If you want to keep track of how much your solar system is producing versus how much you're consuming in the home, you can set this billing dates the same as your electric bill. So you can check your electric bill and make sure the electric company is properly crediting you for any solar production and consumption and make sure their numbers are correct. For this purpose, let's go to the day. So let's look at an energy balance chart. Okay, so this. So 24.7 kilowatt hours was consumed in the home of the solar production and 8.5 kilowatt hours has gone back to the electric company. Um, that's where the solar production has gone. But the home has consumed 29.2 kilowatt hours so far today. And of course at nighttime, we're about six o'clock in the evening. This consumption number is going to go up. But at least, and by the way, there's some back and forth here um, because we scroll back up here. We're starting to use some electric from the electric company, by the way. 
we're not producing enough to cover electric use at the moment because the sun is setting. So that's why this number is off a little bit. And by the way, here's a color uh, chart here on the bottom. Okay, there's monthly, the same sort of numbers. Here's yearly if you want to compare it on a yearly basis. And you can scroll back to some prior years if you want to. And there's 2022, 2021. Okay, you can see what the social is produced. Okay. By the way, I should mention not everybody is covering 100% of their electric bill with solar because maybe there's limited amount of roof space that's suitable for solar. Maybe other roofs are north or they're shaded. Okay. Okay, so here's a chart for production and consumption, and I'm doing this on a yearly basis. So you can see here we have different months, January, February, March, etc. Now the green bars is what the solar system has produced. And you'll notice this varies every month. But you'll notice, by the way, that in the winter months, the solar system is going to produce less electric, right? Because you get more shade, it's not as much sun. And in general, what happens is you end up producing most electric during the springtime. See how it's pretty high here, March, April, May, good electric production. Even June actually was pretty decent. But you'll notice here, we got down to July, the production dropped a lot. The solar system produced less in July because even though there's a lot of sun in July, the solar panels get very, very hot. And when the solar panels get hot, they actually produce less electricity. Electronics and solar panels do not like heat. So that's what's interesting here. Same thing for August. You notice how that's dropped a lot. And we're only through the first week of September, so we really can't count that yet. But this is perfectly normal. And then you'll notice here on the orange bars, we got consumption. Again, this varies by month by month, but normally what happens is people are not using much electric earlier in the months of the year. But as we start getting into summer, you know, people run their air conditioner. Uh, if you have a pool, you're running a pool pump more, etc. And so you're using more electric during the summer months, right? And what happens here in Florida and a lot of the hotter states is you accumulate credits in these months and you use them up uh, during the hot summer months, okay? The other thing I would mention too, here in Florida, we are not on time of use rates, not for residential. Um, but I know California and some other states are. If you are, this chart's going to look different. Uh, we had a lot of customers in California, they're on time of use rates where, hey, the electric uh, is more expensive between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., for instance. Then what they will do is they will be charging up their battery before 4 p.m. And when that high cost electric kicks in between 4 and 7, now they'll start using their battery electric, okay, to avoid buying the high cost electric from the utility company, or at least buy less from the electric company during those high cost times. In here we have comparative production. I really don't use this much, but you can compare, for instance, you know, what the solar system produced in July of 19, 2020, 2021, 2023. I really don't look at this a whole lot, but if you get a high electric bill, and um, you're wondering if your solar system is producing properly, you can look at this chart and just see, hey, if it's producing, you know, several different months, it's producing a lot less than it used to, that might indicate you have a problem with the solar system and you might want to call for service, okay? Now, of course, it's normal to have some fluctuations in this. And, you know, you could have one particular June, for instance, where, hey, you got lots of rain and storms. You're going to produce less electric in that month, right? But if you see the other months are producing pretty similar, then your solar system is probably just fine, okay? But if you see a big drop, this might be an indication that something is wrong. And I'll show you uh, solar panel level monitoring here in a minute, okay? Here's environmental benefits. So over 83,000 pounds of CO2 saved, like planting 629 trees. So there's some feel good environmental, awesome. And now let's go over this bottom toolbar. So this is. This here is the overview. That's what I just showed you. Here's the battery icon. We can click on this and get the battery level. Okay, so let's talk about the battery backup. Okay, so this customer has the optional battery. Um, they do have WeatherGuard on. What WeatherGuard means is this solar system is connected uh, to the local weather station. And this customer, you know, we're in a hurricane zone. 
Of course, they want to make sure the battery is charged so that way they can use their battery during a power outage, right? <laughs> but at the same time, the normal setting is that we normally just charge only from the solar system only. Why? Because the electric from the solar is less than the utility, right? So we like to charge from there. However, if there's a storm headed our way, heaven forbid, um, even if we have to grab the electric from the utility company, we want to make sure the battery is 100% charged. So that's what this weather guard does. So it's just a peace of mind that you don't have to worry about. And this is all automatic if you have this weather guard switched to on. Okay. Um, this bottom icon shows you the monitoring, uh, the physical layout of the solar system. Now, you'll see here north is pointed up. So this set of solar panels is pointed south. It's going to get more sun. You notice some of these solar panels are blue, some are black. Why? Well, this is after 6 p.m. And now the sun is starting to set. And so some of the panels are not getting enough sun to work. And so they're turning black. That's perfectly normal. Okay. You may also notice that different solar panels may read a different amount of wattage. This is perfectly normal for them to vary a little bit. Why? Because an east or west roof is going to produce different amount of electric than a south facing roof. Also, some solar panels might be have more shade than others. They might be black, they might be shaded. And so that might be an indication that you have to trim a tree branch. And third thing is some solar panels might have a higher wattage just because the solar panels themselves have a certain power tolerance. So it might be rated 400 watts in the lab, but that's lab conditions at 77 degrees. Um, lab conditions, don't mimic the real world, right? So again, if the solar panels are very hot, they're gonna produce less. And when we design a solar system, we take into account shading and local weather conditions, okay. but it's normal to have a certain variance in the wattage. Now, if you see that, hey, one solar panel is producing 300 watts and one next to it is zero or 10 watts, then that tells you that there's something wrong, the system needs to be serviced. Now, in case your solar installer is not in business, then just simply find another company that is an authorized Solar Edge installer. You can also call Solar Edge themselves. They might give you a limited amount of help and they can tell you uh, some information, but it's best to actually call an installer. So I hope you found this video helpful. Solar by Green Greg here. And on this channel, we cover home solar PV, solar pool heating, and energy efficiency. And I do it all without any sales talk. You see, I've been in the solar industry now for 16 years. So I know the insider secrets, the tips and tricks, stuff that nobody else will ever tell you. But I'm also a homeowner just like you. And so I know how it is. Hey, you're just trying to get some information or maybe do some light troubleshooting and you don't want sales talk, right? If that's you, you just want information, hey, you're in the right spot. Go ahead, hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Oh, and by the way, in the comments, hey, let me know where you're from. It's always fun to know where people are from and how far my voice is reaching to help people out. And if you have a future topic you'd like me to cover, feel free to pop that in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.